I'm doing a quick video to show how to upgrade the SB Reef Lights so that the Reef Pi Aquarium Controller run by Raspberry Pi Computer can then control the dimming of these basic model lights. This is the SB Reef Light, the basic model 16 inch with the dimming uh, that's manual. We're going to be taking out this circuit. So the first step is to remove those knobs. Then, re then you're going to want to remove these nuts on each side. And you're going to need to remove the screws that are around the, the top edge here. So there are six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do that and then we'll be able to open up the light. Now we're going to show how to uh, take apart the light once you have the nuts and the screws out. I'm just going to lift up on here. And we're going to separate the top from the actual light. There's going to be one way that it's designed to flip open to, and it's actually the other way, so I'm going to flip the light around. So that is the inside of the light. You can see the drivers here, one for blue and one for white. That's for the LED uh, driver, and that's where we need to get our signal to for the dimming. This right here is an extra power supply that just runs the fans, but there's also power from this power supply going to each of the dimming circuits, which we're going to take advantage of in our own dimming circuit. And then this is the actual part that we're going to be replacing down here, which is the native, the stock dimming circuit. So this one's actually wired a little bit different than my other one, so you're gonna have to see how, as far as the um, routing of the wires. But basically you can unclip that. This uh, connector here is actually the 12, po is 12 volt power coming from that power supply. And we're gonna be able to just lift up on this dimmer circuit and it'll remove, it'll uh, come out of that hole. We've got one other connector to remove there, and then we've got our um, stock manual dimming circuit removed. And this is that part that we use as the knob when we're dimming. So that's how you remove the dimming circuit uh, from these lights. There's another one, if you look over here, there's another dimming circuit that will also remove in the exact same way by removing the wire and then removing the connector attached to it. So I'm just going to show some of the components that you're going to need to build your circuit for your dimming board. Now this is the components needed for two circuits, one for the white and one for the blue lights. And I'm putting them on the same circuit board. So this is the proto board that I'm using. I have a couple of what are called JST connectors. I've got two NPN transistors here. I have two voltage regulators. I have another JST connector. It's a different type of JST connector and it's got the cables connected to it. And then I've got some resistors here. I need 10,000 ohm and 1,000 ohm resistors, which I have. You just need two of each. So I've now finished my second circuit, which is here. And I wanted to point out a couple of the um, points about these two items here uh, to help with your wiring and building your own circuit. Right here we have the voltage regulator. This is what it's, what's going to turn the 12 volt in from the uh, fan power supply, turn it into 10 volts, which we need for our circuit. And so th on this voltage regulator, if you uh, have the regulator facing towards you with the uh, lettering uh, the letters facing towards you. Then you can number the pins 1, 2, and 3 from left to right. The pin here on the left, which is number 1, that's going to be your 12-volt pin. So that's what um, you're going to have wired into your 12-volt. And you can see here I have it arranged uh, so that the pin is right on the the red wires coming in. And then those pin number 1s are right there on the, on the other side. They're all soldered together. The middle pin on this, 
Pin number two is gonna be your ground. I've got them wired together. You've got your black wire coming in from your 12 volt power supply. And then the middle pins are all wired together with that um, black wire in. The last pin, pin number three, all the way to our right, is going to be the 10 volt output that we're looking for. Now unfortunately, you, because of the way that the circuit's designed, you can't have these two pins tied together. You need to have them uh, separated so that each can drive its own separate circuit, one for blue and one for white outputs on your lights. The other item I wanted to speak about is this NPM transistor. The one that I picked is the one here, the same one that Ryan115 used on his post, which is this 2222A NPN transistor. If you have it facing towards you where the flat uh, surface of the transistor is facing towards you with the lettering, then you can number your pins similarly, one, two, and three. Number one is called your emitter pin, number two is your base, and number three is your collector all the way to the right. The way that these are wired, basically number one, the pin here on the left, is going to be connected to the ground for the circuit. Pin number two in the middle is actually going to be connected to a 10,000 ohm resistor, which is then going to be connected to your uh, PWM input into the circuit. And then the pin number three all the way, or sorry, lead number three all the way to the right. That's going to be where the output is coming out. And so that's going to connect to uh, two different items. This is your only uh, kind of three-way connection in the circuit in that out or that pin that lead is going to be connected to the thousand ohm resistor that's uh, on the other end connected to your 10 volt output from your voltage regulator here and then on the other side of the connection it's going to be connected to the output that's going to the um the light led driver the white meanwell led driver on your output pin and so that's uh, a little bit about the wiring of these two items because uh, it's important to make sure that you know which pin is which in your circuit. So one of the other things I wanted to discuss is how you'd like to turn on and off your light in the Reef Pi dimming circuit setup. In order to understand that, I wanted to point out some of the features of the original stock dimming circuit so that we can discuss how to best turn on and off our lights. If you look here at the original dimming circuit, you'll see that there's three pins on the output. There's one that's a zero to 10 volt, the next pin is the ground, and then the bottom is labeled on and off. As for our dimming circuit, the output is actually going to connect to zero to 10 volts, then we've got ground output. But in the dimming circuit that I've, des that I've put together, the on off pin isn't connected, and I'll show, the re show you the reason why and how we can get around that. Basically right now I have my multimeter here set up to connect to the zero to 10 volt pin and the ground pin. We're gonna see how the potentiometer here which controls the dimming smoothly ramps up and down. The potentiometer is actually in the off position right now. For those of you who have this light, you know that the potentiometer here has an on to off de detent. In the off position, the light actually turns off, and when you flip over to the on position, the light turns on. However, the volts that are output on the zero to 10 volt pin are essentially stay the same, 1.8 volts, no matter if it's on or off. Once it's on, as you ramp up, and spin your potentiometer, the volts output smoothly ramps up to about 9.8 volts. So how does the light turn on and off? It uses the on to off pin, and the way that it's wired, the way that it works is a little bit different. So I'm gonna switch the wiring on my multimeter 
to now connect to the on to off pin and we'll see the behavior. Right now the, the potentiometer is in the off position but there's actually 11.3 volts, almost 12 volts, being output out the on to off pin. Once I flip this over to the on position, the volts are gonna quickly drop back down to zero volts. And that's basically the signal to the driver to turn on once that drop happens. So there are two options really to control the on to off feature of this light. One of them would be to wire an additional circuit to then output 11 to 12 volts to that pin when you want it to be off, therefore burning electricity to keep your light off. The other option is to actually use the Reef Pi power controller feature to turn off the light completely, and that's what I've decided to do. Even with this dimming circuit, we still have AC power coming in, one cord on each side. And I'll simply wire each output or each AC power extension cord to a timer and then turn off the blues and the whites separately when I'm ready for them to turn off. So I've now completed two circuits, one for each light controlling both the blue and the white LEDs. I would say that most people are probably just going to make one of one of these circuits and then daisy chain the output to the other light. But I've decided to control each light individually with separate dimmer controls. The one on the left here was the first one that I made. I was able to tidy things up on the circuit on the right and make it a little more compact, but nevertheless they both uh, achieve the same functions. I'm going to show how I'm going to wire this and connect it back, connect it all together in the light. So basically we've got our wire here, that's the for one of the drivers, this is the other wire for the other driver, and then this is the uh, 12 volt power that I'm going to tie into, that's the connector that's uh, free from removing one of the stock dimmer circuits. I've already got pulled through here a connector that I'm going to use, a cable that I'm going to use to connect to Reef Pi. I decided to use an Ethernet cable. Of course, Ethernet has eight wires to it. We only need three for the particular setup that we're showing today. However, I liked the idea of having additional wires in case I ever wanted to add a moonlight or if I wanted to do something else with the on-off circuit. They're just backup but you only need three wires. I know other people have used headphone cables, could headphone cables have three wires to them. But basically the way this is gonna wire up is I've got my different connectors labeled out, out. Those are the driver outputs. I'm gonna just simply plug in the driver outputs. And then I can plug in my Ethernet cable that's going to go to Reef Pi. And then the last thing is going to be my power cable. And you can see that we have our dimmer circuit installed here. We didn't have to cut any wires. It's pretty easy to go back to stock, and as long as you keep your dimmer circuit, you can go back to stock pretty rapidly by unconnecting and uh, putting back in the circuit into its standard spot. And I found that the best spot for this circuit is going to be actually different from where the original dimmer circuit is. The original dimmer circuit goes in that hole there, but I've decided to tuck in my circuit back in here under next to one of the fans and next to this other uh, LED driver. I'm going to wire things up a little bit differently and cover my circuit in some uh, electrical tape before I do the final install. But this is, uh, in effect, how you're going to wire up your connector and the spot that I've decided to put my circuit. Now that I've installed my circuit, I'm going to show that the uh, dimming circuit is working well and actually producing really good results, especially in the low ranges. If you remember before, we were getting 
1.8 volts on the low end and 9.8 volts on the high end with the stock dimming circuit. However, with the new dimming circuit connected to Reef Pi here, we're currently at 100% maximum on this light, on this circuit, and we're actually up to 9.9 .9 volts, which is great. But even more impressive to that than that, as we dim down here, if we go down to 1%, the light dims down appropriately. It's hard to see because the light is against the carpet here. We're actually getting down to 0 0.1 volts. The light, as far as I can tell, to my eye, doesn't have any flicker or any other problems with this low voltage, but it's much dipper, dimmer than the stock dimming circuit was capable of doing. I've been very impressed with the way that this dimming circuit is able to respond quickly as I hit save right now and the light brightens right back up and um, it smoothly reacts to my uh, chosen percentage and the voltage is staying pretty constant right there as you can see on my output on the voltmeter.